Welcome to part three of my 3D printed robot arm. In the prior videos, I showed you a working robot arm with a custom PCB, but in this video, I'm gonna show you a new actuator design because in the prior one, I was running into a boatload of problems, six problems in particular. The first one being heat. I actually was melting the planetary gears so I have a better solution on that. And then homing, I didn't have a good homing solution yet. So there's one now built into this actuator. Backlash was still an issue where I still had sort of some inaccuracies in the 3D prints. Uh, the wiring was still really difficult, so I've got a cool solution for that. Jogging was still not ideal, uh, so there's a much better way to jog using touch sensors on this actuator. And then the training aspect, where you actually can now move the robot into position through the jogging and then record the position for later playback from G-code. So I'm going to take you through the new design of the actuator uh, and all of the goodies built into it to solve all of these problems. And here is the new design. This is in Fusion 360. I did have to rebuild the actuator design in Fusion 360. Uh, it's got a USB connector like before. It's got a switch like before, as well as the WS2812 indicator LED. I find that super handy. But it's got a brand new touch sensor. There's uh, eight touch pads available. They're in a little circular pattern around the outside for you to drag your finger around. But you can see there's a new fan in there. That was key for the cooling. It's a drive 8825 like before. Uh, there's a uh, DC to DC converter there that converts the 20 volts to 5 volts. There's your uh, stepper motor driver. You got those right angle connectors to the touch PCB and the fan connector. There's a step indicator LED on this one and a fan indicator LED. Those will blink along with the PWM signals going to it. And then an LED to indicate the 5 volt power is live. There, uh, there's the inside of the uh, LED. It's uh, soldered at a right angle on that circuit board. And then the brains of the operation is the ESP32. I am in love with this chip. You will see all of the amazing stuff done to benefit it. There's the heat sink. That really helped with heat management. That's an RC motor heat sink. That's the out 20 volts to the next actuator. That's the 35 millimeter stepper motor. And then now, brand new, we've got the temp 36 temperature sensor and a hall sensor embedded into the actuator to detect a magnet for the homing sequence. Uh, and then this is the bottom of the actuator. This is the top. You can see those new acrylic uh, balls in there. We're no longer using the airsoft BBs. And then those little arms there are the slip ring arms to do the copper contacts to the edge to carry the 20 volts inside the actuator. Those are the planetary gears inside. And then there's an expansion joints where those actually are flexible so that uh, you get the anti-backlash. There's the little connector that holds the three by 1.5 millimeter neodymium magnet and the raceways. And inside there is where the gears fit in that top unit. Again, expansion joints in there to absorb uh, the deformities or any inaccuracies in your print and just give you back like 50% extra um, uh, uh, torque out of this. So kind of rebuilding the motor without the shell on. Uh, you can see that there's really three monolithic layers to this. There's a, a new shell cap and the shell is a little bit wider with the vent holes correctly placed. And then the next actuator connects right there. All right, so here's how I solved the heat problems. I had to find a fan, so I went and looked at a whole bunch of different sizes and shapes, some small ones, some larger ones that filled the entire size of the shell. Uh, and then I had to find a heat sink. Um, I found the RC motor heat sinks were the cheapest and easiest to acquire, although you do still have to do a little bit of aluminum metal grinding to get them to be the correct height. I had to find a temperature sensor. I found the temp 36 was kind of the best balance between easiest to use and the best readings and inexpensive. Uh, and then I had to find a MOSFET to drive the fan. I had never quite built a little fan PWM driver before, uh, but solved that with a really inexpensive, like, you know, six, six cents MOSFET. Uh, and then write the Lua code that reads the temperature sensor, drives the fan PWM, uh, and does it at differing levels of degrees uh, and it all came together pretty nicely. So then I had to find a solution for homing. 
I really wanted to try out the TMC2130 stepper motor driver because it's getting rave reviews online and it has this incredible sensorless homing feature which watches the EMF kind of back pressure on the stepper motor. Uh, but what I found, as you're seeing in this video, is that when I was running it and then I would touch it, it was kind of uncertain how often it would actually catch the sensorless homing. Partly it's because these stepper motors don't run at very high current, and so I don't think it's tuned for that. Uh, but I also found that the uh, cost was really expensive. I found that I kept frying the chips. I must have burned through five or six chips. Um, I found that you had to add protection diodes, so the component count was skyrocketing. Uh, and then you also had to build in a hard end stop, so I no longer would have 360 degree motion of the actuator. Uh, so I decided to just scrap the entire idea of using the TMC2130. Then I decided to try the LED photoresistor sensor combination. So made some new holes in the bottom of the actuator and ordered a whole bunch of different infrared sensors. Uh, tried out every type of thing I could find, mostly off of AliExpress. Uh, I redid the top of the actuator to kind of have like a blackened area you could um, color in so that it would detect dark versus light. And then even tried out some of these time of flight sensors like the VL6180X, but none of them really seemed to do the trick. The answer ended up being a Hall Effect sensor. There are a few reasons. One is the sensor itself is really cheap. I think it's like 10 cents. The magnet is really cheap and it's small and it fits well inside the actuator. Uh, it was easy to read the sensor values on the ESP32 and it allowed 360 degree rotation of the actuator so that you really weren't constrained by a mechanical end stop. So in this video you can see that green LED. It's just an indicator. Uh, there's the magnet right there. It fits inside a pocket. It's a 3 millimeter by 1.5 millimeter. Uh, so it fit really well. It wasn't too big or too small. There's the pocket on the bottom where you insert the Hall Effect, and then there's an extra 3D printed piece that you got to print out to kind of stick in there to hold it. Uh, but there's a homing test being run here in the video. It was the first time I got the homing working, and it was a pretty exciting moment because it worked so well and it's so consistent, like it was it was doing an end stop at the exact spot each time. Uh, there's the little pocket that you put the Hall Effect into. So now on to the anti-backlash exploration. The previous design was pretty good. It was done by Jeff Kerr, who goes by Lobo CNC on Thingiverse, and since the original design, he ha has come out with a cycloidal design so I tried it out because cycloidal uh, does have a lot of promise and potential, but I found that there was just too much vibration, it was too harsh on the stepper motor, uh, it just was not as good as hoped. Uh, but he likewise also came out with an anti-backlash design using a flex spline, and you can see it in this video, there's a little bit of give on that flex as the gears go by it, and this allows for a really tight fit without sucking away too much of the torque from the stepper motor and it allows some irregularities in the 3D print to be absorbed by the flex spline and it turned out to be an absolutely brilliant solution. So this is now the new design that I'm going with. It did end up having a wider actuator than the original one so I did have to kind of uh, redesign the shell around it but that was uh, good because I needed more room for the ESP32 and the custom circuit board. Also, um, the new design uses 4 millimeter acrylic balls instead of the prior Airsoft BBs, and that created a much nicer slew bearing for a better all-around solution. Okay, wiring a robot is a total pain. In the earlier videos, I had a lot of comments too, like, what in the world are you doing putting an ESP32 in every actuator? And one of my reasons is so that I don't have to go run massive amounts of wires to every actuator because if you think about all of the functionality in each one, including all those touch sensors, imagine if you had like 15 or 20 wires per actuator running to the base unit, your wiring is a total nightmare. Uh, even getting less wires run is still uh, difficult. And so the thought is, hey, there's something called a slip ring out there. They're quite popular can we do a slip ring inside this actuator? 
so I figured, hey, it's worth running the experiment. And it turned out that it's working really nicely. As you can see in the video, uh, I've got you know 1.3 ohms of resistance uh, through these copper tape strips. And the size of the actuator is pretty nice for doing this. Just had to kind of add those little 3D printed uh, brush arms uh, on the top of the actuator. Running the copper tape is a little bit hard, but it worked pretty well, so I think we might have a solution. And then if all of the G-code is being sent over Wi-Fi, we could end up here with a zero-wire robot, which has never been done before. Then I had to find a solution for better jogging. So the first thing I tried out was this standard joystick that's readily available on AliExpress and eBay. It's super cheap, and it's really easy to use. It's just a variable resistor in an X and Y direction. So I got that going with some Lua code, and I really liked it. Uh, the problem is it's just too darn big. So I decided to try out a smaller joystick, the PlayStation Portable. It works the same way as the standard joystick. It's just got a nicer profile to it. Uh, I did some new 3D designs for it, and it still kind of was too big for the actuator. I just didn't like it, didn't like how it looked, didn't like how it fit. So I figured, well, let's try out an Xbox controller. Uh, it's pretty easy to connect your Xbox controller through your browser now because it's built into Chrome. Uh, and so then I spun up a Chili Pepper workspace uh, for the robot arm uh, and connected over Wi-Fi to the ESP32 to then send signals, and it worked really well. So I am going to go with that as an available solution. Uh, it's working today but it still wasn't quite good enough because there's a little bit of lag between those three layers you've got to go through. It's not bad, but if you're doing really fine precision alignment of the actuators, uh, you want something that's more responsive. Well, the ESP32 has 10 built-in touch sensors, uh, and so why not go use those? So in this new actuator design, I did a touch dial where you can spin your finger around in one direction to accelerate the motor and then spin it in the reverse direction to, to move it in the reverse direction. Uh, and it turned out to be a really beautiful design. It's super responsive. And so you're going to be able to jog this through the Chili Pepper workspace, through the Xbox controller, and through the touch dial. OK, let's talk about training the robot. So the best way to train the robot is to be able to actually move it into position while you're touching the robot and you're playing with the touch dials on each actuator to kind of position it to the start spot and then Wait your next recorded. position and then your next position. Once you've got it in your preferred position, it'd be really great to just tap a button on the robot to record that waypoint and then be able to play it back later from G-code. So the model is that you long Waypoint press recorded. the center button on the touch dial to record your G-code, and then you should be able to play back the G-code from the touch dials, or really from the Chili Pepper workspace uh, that is running the robot arm. Okay, I'm gonna take you on a walk through this actuator. Let's get this turned on. And it immediately goes into a homing sequence. That blue light lights up. It does a little forward and then back off and go slow until the hall sensor is exact. When you get a purple light, it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and jog this forward. And then when I let go, it stops. I can go the other direction. I'll show you what that's like from this angle. So if I just do one, it's going very slow. And as I go further, it goes faster. And I can go the other way. So it'll go really fast. Nice and smooth. OK, so let's program some G code into this thing. The uh, jogging, by the way, is done through PWM frequency, and the frequency adjusts as you move around. For G code, it's going to be a little different. So you hold it for three seconds, one, two, three, and it'll program that location. Then I'll move a little bit, one, two, three, program that. And then we'll do a third one just for the heck of it. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, and then, oh, I must not have held it long enough. So it's playing back the two positions that I did. It's using the RMTTX hardware. Here, let's do that one more time. To generate the pulse counts, the ESP32 has this amazing RMT hardware that lets you just send duration lengths into separate hardware to play back pulses. 
You can also see here, that's just a pointer. So I can kind of see the movement. I've got 20 volts coming out of that slip ring. You can kind of see the copper in there. And then even as I uh, move this around, that's pretty good stability. The backlash on it, there, it doesn't really move. Uh, so this is in pretty good shape, and then the fan will even in, uh, increase in speed as it heats up. Uh, so it kind of progressively goes all the way up uh, to 100% to really cool it off. I've been able to get this to not really go beyond, say, 38 degrees Celsius uh, while it's running. Okay, let's do a teardown. So I'm popping off the touch sensor, pulling out the circuit board, taking the fan off, the stepper driver, and the DC to DC converter. And then I'm detaching the Hall Effect sensor, the temperature sensor, the motor wire, and the power wires, popping that ESP32 off the bottom. Here I'm taking the heat sink out, and then I'm going to unscrew the shell from the base, but you have to take out the temperature sensor first and the Hall Effect sensor. You've got to pop out that little 3D printed insert, and then you can rotate the shell off. And now I need to line up the slot of the top and bottom of the actuator so you can pop the four millimeter acrylic balls out. You just use a little Allen wrench. There's a hole on the back side that lets you push one by one each acrylic ball back out. And then you can pop the top off there by just using the Allen wrench to kind of rotate it around and it rises up. You can see those little copper strips, the planetary gears, and then I'm popping the motor off so you can see what's inside the motor. Okay, well thanks for watching, and just to note, I've got a link to the GitHub repo in the description of this video. Uh, the GitHub uh, has the PCB schematic and board files in Eagle format. I've got a bill of materials for all of the stuff you've got to buy. I've got the Fusion 360 files, uh, so you can kind of modify it on your own in Fusion 360, which is free for makers, by the way. A lot of people seem to not realize that. I've also got the Node MCU ESP32 for Lua firmware that includes my touch module, my pulse counter module, and my RMT TX module that lets you send the G code. Uh, you've got to upload that firmware to your ESP32, and then you also have to install all the Lua code. I have that in the GitHub repo as well. There's also a link to the Chili Pepper work in progress workspace uh, for this robot. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.